There's been a lot of releases for Airtable this year. Dark Mode, Field Agents, Omni. But despite all of the marketing push behind those features, nothing has me excited as this feature that we're going to talk about. Custom Interface Extensions. It's a mouthful, and it's kind of technical. But honestly, this feature is going to change the way that you think about Airtable and how you can use Airtable in your own business. So let's talk about what it is and why you would ever need some of these custom components inside of Airtable. So we work on hundreds of Airtable projects a year, and Airtable by itself can do typically about 60% of the heavy lifting. Then you layer on integrations to various other business systems that you have, and you're looking at about 80% coverage of the features that you would want inside of Airtable. But there's always these moments where you say, oh, I wish Airtable would look like this, or I wish Airtable would let me do this one thing just a little bit differently. And it's those moments where you're hoping for a custom component, a custom interface extension, the ability to really shape this and make it look the way you want. So here's three quick examples I can think of that we've had requests from customers in the past. One is around better managing customer communications. If you've ever tried to manage SMS or WhatsApp inside of Airtable, it's kind of a mess. Yes, you could create an automation and you could have it actually create those records, but now you have list views of threaded conversations and you can't actually display it as a threaded conversation. It's just not really an ideal experience. Another use case is if your business has anything to do with field service. If you're trying to manage assets and resources and jobs and you want to see them on a map and you want to optimize your routes, this is really not a great experience inside of Airtable. And a third example is around time tracking. Yes, you can create timesheets and track time and create automations for a button on when to start that. If you want to check it out, we've got a separate video for you to look at. But if you want something as simple as a stopwatch where you can start and stop and watch the time increment, that's not something that you could do in Airtable natively. So these are all use cases where you would say to yourself, hmm, I wish Airtable could behave just a little bit differently, and then it would really work for my needs. In this video, we're going to take a look at Airtable's interface extensions through the lens of one that I've created. I went with that first user example where we want to have threaded SMS conversations so we can actually be texting, receiving text messages, and viewing all this information right alongside our Airtable data. Now, really, we're going to be focusing on what kinds of features we can actually do within interface extensions. I'm not going to get so much into the logic and how I built this. We're going to do a separate video that will show off the SMS tool a little bit more in depth if that's something that you're interested in. So let's chat through everything that we know about Airtable's interface extensions. Hey, I'm Dan Lehman from AutomationHelpers.com, and we help businesses like yours get automated with portals, apps, and integrations. So first up, this feature is currently in alpha. Typically, you've got a really small group of users for alpha, then you've got beta, and then you're releasing it to the public. So I want to give thanks to Airtable for letting me be part of this alpha program. And I'm sorry that you can't get your hands on this feature this exact moment, but this is rolling out very quickly. I found this very easy to use. So I imagine that this is something that we'll be hearing a lot more about in the upcoming months. The next feature that we know is that this is slated for Airtable's enterprise scale plan. That's their most expensive pricing plan. Now, I'm sincerely hoping this is one of the features that we see trickle down to other plans because I think this makes them really competitive against AI vibe coding tools that you see gaining a lot of traction right now. But we'll see how it goes. Throw your love and encouragement in the comments below so hopefully the Airtable team can see this and how important this is to businesses that are not just on enterprise scale. Now, I just want to touch quickly upon the history of Airtable and where we see all these features colliding together. Now, in the past, just a couple of years ago, we had everything happening at the data layer. We had different views like our grid views and our Kanbans and our calendars, and we could see and interact with all of our data. Then we had extensions, which behave similarly to these interface extensions, but these were all on the sidebar. And so you could have different integrations. There's a whole library of them. And it was helpful for these kind of custom ways of interacting with your data. But then Airtable evolved from the data layer to having interfaces. And interfaces really give us that ability to create our own process flows that we can say, hey, here's exactly what you need to do to onboard a customer, as opposed to everything being based in a grid view. Now we could suddenly build entire process flows for companies inside of interfaces. But the problem was those extensions that were on the sidebar never mapped to the interfaces. And so if you use the map extension and you had different locations on a map, you couldn't actually get that to happen on an interface. And so is this really fragmented kind of experience? Are you using interfaces for everything or are you using a combination with the data layer and extensions? And now we're finally finding a solution to all of that. 
So underneath the hood, we're using JavaScript or TypeScript and React. And for developers, we can do everything through an SDK, and it's really easy to package up and deploy. But along the way, Airtable's really seen the power of a lot of these AI coding tools. And so they released a set of rules for Cursor and for Windsurf. And so when I set up my environment, I was able to tap into Cursor. And so the example that I'm showing you, I was able to essentially vibe code. I am a developer. I can write the code myself. But even for developers, AI is really freeing up the ability to create things like these components much more easily. So the set of rules inside of Cursor made it much easier for me to be able to prompt the LLM to tell it exactly what I want to build and for it to understand what it needed to do. It's much different than if you were just using ChatGPT and you're asking questions about the Airtable API and it's just going based off of what it was trained on or it's going out to look at the documentation, pull that information back. A lot of the times that can be wrong and you're getting some kind of misguided information. So what I liked was this was all within my own environment. It's pulling the information that it needs to out of these rules out of the SDK for me to be able to develop. Now, I know I'm getting a bit deep into the technical side of things, but here's what I really envision is going to happen in the future. We have Airtable Omni, and that gives us the ability to chat with our data and to be able to build interfaces with inside of Airtable. This has been a really big push for the Airtable team. And we have this way to then develop some of these extensions locally using our own AI tools. But I have to imagine in the future, they're going to marry the two of these up so now you could be vibe coding much more like an experience like Lovable, be vibe coding inside of Airtable Omni and tell it, hey, I want you to make this map on the screen that does this thing, and it's going to create it for you as it does the standard interface components. So right now, if you're a developer, you're cheering because, hey, we're going to have access to do this and I can do it in my own coding environment. And if you're not a developer, you're probably thinking, okay, I like where this is going. I might not be able to do this myself now, but I probably will be able to with the assistance of Airtable Omni in the future. So now let's talk about the specifics of some of the things we can do. One of the pieces that I really like is when it comes to developing these extensions, I can do this in my own local environment, and then I can point my extension at this. So I'm actually inside of Airtable right now. We're able to point this at my local development server so that when I press this button, it's actually pulling in real time from my code. So as I'm having a conversation and I'm prompting it, updating the code on the fly, it's immediately pushing those changes and I'm seeing the changes reflected as I'm building it. I don't have to actually compile and build my code and then release it and push it to Airtable in order to see those changes. So this makes it really easy to be able to debug. Another interesting thing is that you can see all these different fields feel very much just like the native interface experience. So we can see different ways of filtering our data, and what fields we want to make visible. This is actually really important because if you don't make those fields visible, then it doesn't currently have access to that within the data model itself. So at one point it was saying, you don't have this field. And I said, yes, I do have this field. And it turns out I hadn't made it visible. So you need to make that visible in order to actually read that data. And if we scroll down here, this is really cool. We can have custom properties that we build within the code to then allow in this sidebar as we're doing any kind of admin or setup work. So for example, I thought, huh, we're gonna have some bugs that we have to work out and wouldn't it be really great if we could just have an area where people could copy and paste what we're doing. So I have a little toggle here for allow debugging. Another thing that I did is in this SMS feature, I wanted to have templates where it could have conditional logic and pull in data from Airtable. So I just toggle this on and it goes from my main SMS experience into these templates themselves. And on top of that, then I can allow that debugging so I can see, oh yeah, here's this information. I can copy and paste this back into the LLM to have it spit out updates and things like that. And so these are just a couple of examples of what we could put down here in custom properties to allow the user who's not the person developing it to be able to make changes or to apply different settings. So these templates here are essentially configuration data. I need that data to live somewhere, and I'm not exactly sure where. Should it live as records inside of tables? Should it live as configuration data somewhere? And so what we can do with inside of Airtable is Airtable has this global config object, and this allows us to store key value pairs for this configuration option and information. Now, this isn't huge. It's got a max size of 150 kilobytes. And so essentially think of this as like JSON key value pairs that we're storing. 
And this is where we can keep some of those option data that doesn't belong necessarily in tables and needs to be stored somewhere. So this is really helpful to be able to take that data and store it someplace for those configuration options. Now, as you'd expect, since this is part of Airtable, you'd want to actually write and read data from Airtable itself. Now, in my particular extension, I'm not actually writing data to Airtable. Because of the volume of text messages that people have, I don't want to use my record limits to store a bunch of SMS messages. Instead, I want that to live with OpenPhone, the tool that we're using for actually doing the communicating, and we can just surface this information here. But I do want to read Airtable data to be able to pull information about the customer. And that's what I've done with some of these templates. So if I use my at symbol, I can start searching for order status. And if I tab off on that, what it's actually done is it's populated information from my user record about the specific order. So this tracking number comes from my actual client record that it's pulling in that order. We've got a lookup and now it's inserting it in here. So I think this is where the magic really happens, that we can take all of this data that's already living inside of Airtable, marry it with these custom experiences to be able to have the two work in tandem really well. Now, another cool feature that's built into this is that Airtable allows you to take within your own custom interface. So you can see this little part of the widget that says, hey, I'm chatting with Dan. We can take that and use it as a trigger to open up the actual record details. So I can click on my name here, and this now uses Airtable's functionality. I didn't build this portion of it. So we can see information about our client and the orders, and that can tap into that directly from our own interface component. Now, from the business logic and integration side, what we're doing is when a user inputs a message here, then we take that message and we're sending it via the open phone API. Well, initially, I wanted to make the calls to open phone directly from inside of my component that I built. But currently, I couldn't do that because there wasn't really a secure way to handle that. And I had some cores issues. But that's something that I was able to then use Pipedream or you could use N8N or Make or Zapier essentially as a middleware to be able to make those calls. One of the features that I'm really excited about from the Airtable team that they're working on right now is the ability to safely make those external API calls directly from the extension itself. Now, Airtable and many users, of course, are excited that they released dark mode this year. We can see that if we click up on our user avatar at the top and go to appearance beta and we can click on light or dark mode. Now, the nice thing here is that we can also create our extension so that it supports both light and dark mode. So if I click over on dark, you can see this is already pretty optimized. I could probably make a couple changes here with the send and maybe with the scrolling here. But by default, really easy to tap into this, into the CSS properties that we need to. And I was able to get it to support dark mode essentially just with my vibe coding. I didn't have to go and rewrite all of this from scratch. Now, when you are done developing this locally, it's a pretty easy process. You can just say block release and it packages it all up for you and pushes it to the Airtable servers. And separate from that, because you have all the code on your computer, that means you can commit that, create a GitHub repo. I was able to push all of my releases to that repo. There's a lot of things that we can do to really automate that deployment process. So it'll be interesting to see how these extensions evolve. Are they going to allow us to have kind of a marketplace of extensions that people can create and you can sell them or you can license them to people? Or will it more be internal building or using custom services like ours to be able to build and deploy these into your own workspace? But I think the future is really bright with all of this functionality that we have to be able to create our own custom interface extensions or components and have this actually happen right within the flow of our own data. If you want to nerd out with me specifically about this SMS tool that I'm building, I'll have a separate video on that. And as always, if you have questions about your own Airtable setup, don't hesitate to reach out to our website at automationhelpers.com where we're offering free 30-minute consultations. 